So one of the most challenging um, experiences that we, we could possibly have as a human being is, is when we're sitting with someone that we love. It could be a friend, it could be a partner, it could be mother, father, uh, a loved one, um, and they're in pain, uh, whether it's physical pain or emotional pain, whether they're, they're experiencing intense pain in their body, or they're going through huge changes in emotions, feelings, they're experiencing intense grief, uh, an intense sense of loss, intense anger, uh, sadness, or just a sense of confusion. They, they feel that their life is falling apart. Um, their heart is broken wide open. They lost something that they thought defined them. They lost something that they thought was theirs. And they're in this place of absolute chaos. And, you know, it's it can be challenging enough to meet the chaos within ourselves. It can be challenging enough to meet the discomfort in ourselves. But what about meeting it in a loved one? And often that can leave us feeling so powerless and, and helpless, you know, when we're faced with a loved one in pain. And often what happens is that so so quickly we, we rush to um, solve the problem. We rush to give them an answer or to uh, give them some comfort or to um, fix their experience, to manipulate their experience, to change their experience, to make them better. Um, often in the, in the West anyway, uh, many people, um, when we think of healing, we, we think of the reduction of the symptoms or the, the disappearance of symptoms. And often that, that's really what Western medicine is very good at is um, numbing symptoms, numbing pain or, or removing pain. But if we're talking about true healing, then we're not just talking about the removal of symptoms or the numbing of symptoms. What we're truly talking about is remembering who we really are, the rediscovery of wholeness here and now, not at some time in the future. True healing is not far away. True healing is always very, very close. And so when we're sitting with someone who's in pain, often we, we feel that the, naturally, and we're not, I'm not saying this is, this is wrong or this is a problem or this is you're doing something wrong, but we, we naturally, we feel the urge to fix um, the one in front of us, to remove their symptoms. So what I want to suggest is actually that um, in running away from someone's experience, which is really what we're doing, what, what we're really doing when we're trying to fix the one in front of us, give them answers, when we're pretending to be the expert or the teacher or the one who knows, when I'm pretending to be the fully healed one, I'm the healed one and you're the one who needs healing, or I'm I'm the fixed one and you're the broken one. When we're coming from that place, when we're coming from the place where um, I'm okay, you're not okay, or I'm the expert and you're the one who needs my help, you're the one who needs my healing. When we're coming from that place, in a sense, we're not really seeing things the way they really are. We're not seeing the one in front of us for who they really are. We've um, forgotten who they really are and, we're, and we're, we're seeing them as a victim, someone who needs help, someone who needs fixing, someone who is broken. So that that will be the, if that's the intention, if that's the attitude, you are broken, I'm going to fix you. What we're really communicating to them is not true healing. What we're really communicating to them is, is that um, healing lies outside of you. Healing is far away from you and I, and I have the answer. We're communicating to them that they are, that they are not whole. Whereas true healing is all about remembering our wholeness and, and, and communicating to the one in front of you that, that they are actually already whole in the midst of this chaos. In the midst of the chaos of this moment, there is a there is an order, um, and we've seen this in our own lives. You know, um, often when when we're faced with a present moment, and remember, we're only ever faced with a moment, this moment. When we're faced with a moment of chaos ourselves, you know, uh, strong and unexpected thoughts and feelings are arising, and, and um, our dream of how this moment was going to be is shattered. Again, there's there's the urge for order. We we long for order. We want to get we, we want to get out of this chaos, and we want to reach a place of order. Uh, and we, we we feel that 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 will come in time. So we 
what we try to do is escape this moment. I want to escape the chaos from each order. So we try to, in a sense, we try to rewind or fast forward. Sometimes I talk about life as a movie and this moment is the present scene of the movie of your life. And the mind always wants to rewind the movie or fast forward the movie. In a sense, it doesn't want to be here in the scene. It wants to rewind the scene to get back to a better scene or fast forward to a better scene to rewind to a scene where there was more joy or more peace or more love or more bliss or more certainty or to fast forward to a scene, a, a future scene where there will be answers, where there will be joy, where there will be calm, where there will be order. So we try to rewind to order or fast forward to order because actually we miss the order in the chaos. Perhaps that's where the true order lies is in the midst of the chaos, like the last place you would ever look for it and that's really what true healing is all about is discovering the the calm still peaceful center of the present moment storm it's not about escaping the storm you can keep on escaping storms your whole life and there's always going to be another another storm you know so true healing is all about discovering the calm the stillness the rest in the midst of the storm in the midst of the chaos so <clears throat> when you're sitting with someone who's in pain, here's the invitation. The invitation is to stay with them, to make their moment sacred, to make this moment sacred, to just for a moment to not try to fix them or give them secondhand answers that you don't really believe in anyway. Because really what you're doing, as I was saying, when you run away from them in this moment, psychologically, what you're really communicating to them is, I cannot be with you. That's why I'm trying to fix you. That's why I'm trying to take away what you're feeling. That's why I'm trying to stop you having the experience your experience, because I can't be with you in that experience. Um, so really, it's, it's about your resistance. It's about your resistance. And um, so really what you want to communicate to the one in front of you is that, uh, I mean, it's very simple, really. It's, it, it comes down to something very, very, very simple. What you really want to communicate to them is, is your presence. What you, you know, it's, it's the sense that I, I, I am here. I am here with you. I am here with you in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the fire, in the midst of hell. Yes, that's what it feels like right now. And I trust on the deepest level that this experience is valid and and you need to somehow you need to go through this. This is intelligent. This is not life going wrong. This is life. This is not your life going wrong. That's perhaps that's what it feels like right now. And I understand that I've been there. We've all been there. But this moment, this is not your life going wrong. This is life. This is life. And so there, there can be that, that deeper trust that whatever they're going through, this, the, the storm, the intense feelings, the, the, the intense fear, the grief, the sadness, that somehow it's intelligent, somehow this is healing. This is, somehow this is not a block to healing. This is healing. This is something that needs to express itself in you. This is something that you need to feel fully. You need to touch. You need to taste. You need to smell. This is... Um, so it's, it, the, the invitation is to, to meet them as that, meet them as that absolute trust in life, meet them as that absolute trust in experience. And even if they're feeling right now that they've completely lost trust in life, they've lost their awakening, they've lost God, they've lost home, even if they feel absolutely homesick right now, perhaps even that feeling even that experience is sacred. Perhaps even the sense of feeling homesick, perhaps even that is sacred. And you, you don't want to delete that moment for them because it's, this takes a lot of humility. I mean, you, you don't know what's best for them. You don't know what's best. Of, of course you would, of course it's, it's difficult to see a loved one in pain. And of course, you know, your preference would be for them to not be in pain, perhaps. But the truth is, 
this moment is as it is. This is the experience they're having. So any true healing has to begin with the absolute validation of this moment, an absolute yes to this moment. And yes, tomorrow the pain may go away. Tomorrow the sadness may disappear. Tomorrow the answers may come. Tomorrow every, the, everything may, may appear to be certain and, and safe. And, but that's not here right now. What we're interested in is what is present, not what may be present tomorrow, not what was present yesterday and now has gone, but what is present right now to meet the one in front of you there. So what's present is a sense of uncertainty, lack of answers, uh, grief, then that's where we begin together. That's where we start together. Can I, just for a moment, this is the invitation, can I meet you there? You know, uh, so it, <laughs> I remember years ago when I, I, this truly dawned on me that and it was it was such a relief, you know, what dawned on me was I, I don't have to know how to fix you. I don't have to know even how to help you. I don't have to come to you with all the answers. I don't have to come to you as the expert. I don't have to come to you as the teacher. I don't have to come to you as the one who has worked everything out. Because to be honest, I was never very good at that. And not, I don't think anyone really is. We're not, it's not kind of how we're built. You know, um, we're built as presence, you know, so we're not we're not very good at trying to fix the one in front of us or trying to give the one in front of us answers or trying to lecture at the one in front of us or trying to convince the one in front of us of something or other. We're not very good at that. It's not how we're built. So it's such a relief to realize that I don't have to know. I don't have to have the answers for you. I don't have to come to you with solutions. I don't even have to know how to help. I come to you naked in a sense. I come to you in that place of not knowing. I, I come to you as presence. I come to you as this inherent ability to be with whatever energies are moving right now. I come to you as this ability that I am, that you are. So when, when I stand as presence, really what I'm doing is uh, maybe without words even, words always come, like, come later, words are secondary somehow. What I'm really doing is I'm mirroring, I'm mirroring to you, your own inherent ability to be with this moment. My presence is your presence. And really in this place of presence, words like my and yours and me and you, they, they're all secondary somehow. Presence, there is only one presence. It's not two presences, it's one one presence. So really I'm, I'm reminding you of your wholeness. I'm reminding you of your presence. I'm reminding you of your, your vastness, your inherent ability to hold, to hold, to embrace this moment. And it's like, look, you are already holding this. You are already vast enough to hold this pain, this fear, this grief, or even this joy, this ecstasy. You are you are as vast as I am. I'm not confusing you with my story of you. I'm, I'm not mistaking you for a limited separate entity. I'm, I'm not um, reducing your potential. I'm not seeing you as a victim. I'm not coming to you with pity. I'm not even necessarily coming to you with advi advice. Just in this moment, I come to you as presence. I offer you presence. Um, I offer you yourself, actually. I'm here to remind you of who you really are. Now, of course, you wouldn't necessarily say all of that. That's just, that's the sense of it. If, if your presence could speak, that's perhaps what it would say. But the beauty of presence is that ultimately it, it comes before words. It doesn't need words. So that's why sometimes just doing nothing, sometimes just offering your presence, your beingness, is the most healing thing of all. And it's such a relief. 
and probably you know it, it's a relief we can't know this but it's a relief for the other person just for a moment to not be told <laughs> how to be or how they should be to to not be treated as a broken thing to not be advised even to not be comforted but to be seen to be felt to be met to be validated it's like yes you are okay yes i am okay here and now and that's the place where true healing this is what i would say that's the place where true healing can begin not as the fixing of a broken thing but as the remembering uh, that who we truly are is never actually broken never actually broken even when we feel broken we are not broken even the sense of being broken is allowed to move in us it's just something else that wants to move everything just wants to move and, and who we are always stands as the the still silent vast open space in the midst of the storm in the midst of the chaos the the order in the midst of the chaos not yesterday not tomorrow not in a previous scene not in a future scene but now and here and this is where we truly meet